your entities are stronger when dot dot dot. This video is about nine different things that create more negative entity conflict in your life. And some of them you can do things about others you might not be able to, but at least you can be aware of them. So let's get started. Numbers one and number two are about negative, negative thinking and negative emotions. This is really critical because what's going on is that this entity is attached to you and it's using your energy to stay attached to you. What kind of energy does it require? Essentially lower vibrational. So in the case of emotions, if you are frustrated, if you are impatient, if you are fearful, if you are disappointed, if whatever the emotion that dominates your life, if it is a lower vibrational one, then that entity is definitely going to stay attached and it's going to encourage you to experience those emotions. So if you have a childhood trauma and there's one of those emotions that's dominant from that childhood trauma, then it's going to push all those buttons to try to get you to stay in that emotional trauma or a repeat of that emotional experience. Number two is negative thinking. Another way to call this is overthinking. And my gosh, every time someone comes to me, they almost always have an overthinking problem. Hey, I understand. I have two. And I think most people do. So what's the problem with overthinking? Is that we're trying to solve a problem that might not be solvable by thought. When we address the spirit world with our minds, it doesn't usually go very well because there's not a lot of logic involved. That's what the brain's really good at. There's this problem and then there's this solution and that will equal this result. It would be nice if it worked that way in the spirit world like it does in the 3D physical world, but it generally doesn't. So when we overthink and we're trying to solve these spiritual problems, the issue is that we usually don't come up with a solution. So then what happens? Well, we end up having lower vibrational emotions. We get frustrated with ourselves. We get impatient. We get disappointed. And we realize that, oh my gosh, maybe I can't solve this. And so we go into despair. So it's avoiding overthinking is hugely critical. And that's not always so easy to do. But at least relax about it and get into a state of flow as much as possible. Number three, one of the things that can create even more negative thinking and negative emotions is a negative household member. If there's someone in your life that is causing you to get frustrated or angry or disappointed or, or even feel unworthy, then what's happening here is you are giving that negative entity those energies. And of course, the what is the solution to this? It's usually not that easy because if they're in your household, they're probably in it for a reason. But if it's someone that's not in your household, someone that you experience outside of that and you, you have some control over that situation, then by all means, try to reduce or remove them from your life. Eventually, when you can handle it again, you can get back into contact with that person if you still so desire. When it comes to someone who is in your house and maybe you are are financially dependent on them or they're financially dependent on you and there's an abuse situation going on where they are actually abusing you, if you aren't strong enough to stand up to that abuse and, and let it roll off your back, then it's only going to cause more issues for you. And so you may not be able to do anything about this, but you could at least give yourself some alone time, some sanctuary time. The fourth one is a big one, the victim mindset. Oh man, if you are engaging in the victim mindset, you are giving that negative entity all kinds of energy. What's the victim mindset? Well, that's the belief that the whole world is out to get you and everything always goes wrong for you. This isn't the case at all. In actuality, it's the opposite. Everything happens for you, for you to get over, to overcome, to blast past and be an even more amazing version of yourself. Stop looking at your situation as woe is me and why am I so unlucky or why is the world so unfair to me? It's not. It's actually quite amazing because you can prove to yourself how powerful you are and how unstoppable you are 
when you actually take this mindset approach and change it from being a victim to being the victor. Number five, don't try to outsmart the entity. If you try to use tactics or tricks, oh, I'm just going to ignore it. Oh, I'm not going to give it these thoughts or oh, maybe I can outsmart it in this way. You can't because it's knowing all of your thoughts. So if you're pretending like, oh, this doesn't bother me, maybe it'll just go away, maybe it'll just go away, I hope it goes away. But in actuality, it's, of course, seeing everything that you're thinking there. It's saying, oh, look at him or her trying so hard to, to outsmart me. Isn't that clever? Look at all that energy that they're giving me. This is great. Yeah, just try to outsmart me. That's working really well for you. Number six, listening to their stories. If you've got a pervasive negative entity that talks to you and tells you the situation, oh, I'm your spirit guide and I'm here to help you. Oh, and then they do something terrible. Oh, oh well, I'm just trapped in you and I'm just trying to get out of you. Help me get away. Or, oh, well, I was just passing through and I ended up getting stuck in your energy field. Man, why can't you just release me? Any of the stories that they tell you is just you giving them energy. They're trying to suck you into their sob story or to their whatever. They're going to appeal to your empathy to try to get you to give them all of that energy. So the best thing to do there is to just don't buy into any of their stories because first of all, none of them are ever true. None of them are ever true. And you need to authentically ignore them. Number seven, we've already talked about this a little bit because it's the overthinking one, essentially. It's trying to figure out how to defeat them. In many cases, you might go and try to find a shaman or another healer to try to remove the entity for you. Oh, I got to try this one. This one sounds like they're going to be able to do it. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, let me try this one over here. Maybe they know better. Generally, this isn't going to work because the actual fact is you need to make changes within yourself to remove the entity. You can't go to somebody else to have them just magically poof it away. I know that's the way you would like for it to be. And that's the way we're raised in this society. We go to a doctor when we have an ailment and they give us a pill and woof, it's gone, right? Well, it doesn't work that way in the spirit world. It's a lot of internal work. So don't try to figure out how to get rid of it. Do the internal work. And you can watch more of my videos to discover how to do that. Number eight is giving them a label that makes them more powerful than you. In this case, the most common is calling them a demon because we look at demons as so much more powerful than we are. That's not the case. You are always more powerful. You have domain over your energy field. If you say, oh my gosh, I have a demon, the entity is going to be able to take advantage of all that fear and all of that self-doubt and all of your reverence, essentially, for this entity when it's never that way at all. And the ninth one is brain chemistry. This is one that you obviously have no control over whatsoever. And if you were to go to Western medicine, they might actually assign you with a diagnosis like schizophrenia. Well, what's really happening here is you have an overabundance or maybe an underabundance of dopamine. This neurochemical has a lot of influence over your thoughts and your emotions in your life. And it's different for every single individual. So it is not one size fits all. But what I've noticed over time is that those of us who can speak to the spirit world generally have some sort of neurochemical, especially dopamine, difference between the rest of the society. So this is not something that you need to look at and say, I'm screwed. I have no recourse. Actually, this isn't yet another benefit. If you have this neurochemical difference, it means you have access to the spirit world. And so in many of the cases, going through this list of the nine things that you don't want to do, the other eight, you can probably do something about most of them. And in that case, then you're going to use that brain chemical difference for a positive result. You're going to be able to heal people. You're going to be able to heal yourself. You might get downloads and insight that you can use to help others or help yourself. 
So don't look at this neurochemical thing as a death sentence. It is a positive and it's the way that you look at it that will make it even more positive. Well, I hope you found this list of nine things helpful. It's really important to me and for you to be able to address as many of these things as possible. What I do is I help people with this. I don't remove the entity for them. I teach them how to overcome all the negative experiences that they may have had from their childhood or all the other things like stepping into your power that you need to be able to do to actually move the entity yourself. So if you're interested in more information about that, there are links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I really hope it helped. I have a lot of videos on the channel that will also give you more insight and thoughts about dealing with negative entities and then rising above all of that and, and experiencing this world as a beautiful place that you're here to experience. I love you unconditionally and I'll see you in the next video.